<laughs> no, 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 at all. Thank you so much. And you're always, you know, coming with the useful uh, interactions. So uh, first of all, uh, before I ask you something, uh, dear Rochelle, uh, I really need to emphasize that the way you are teaching English is the best way of uh, teaching English. This is from my own perspective, because uh, I believe is, is the best way of learning any language is to take it naturally by listening and reading books and grammar, it will come along with, the, with your listening. So you don't have to take uh, courses going around grammar and trying to, uh, to waste your time in these perspectives. So uh, I prefer the way that we are learning things you know, naturally. Thank you everyone for joining. This was going to be live, but there was technical difficulties and I'm not sure what happened, but tried it twice, didn't work. I'm not gonna try it the third time, even though they say sometimes third time's a charm, but no, forget it. We're gonna instead do it the old fashioned way and record and then <laughs> I'll post it later. So thank okay. you for Ken and Isabel for joining me and just wanted to do a live or not live about my three years on YouTube. And I thought like, if you have questions and I'll tell you like how I got started and why, which I know you might've heard me talk about why before, but a little bit about how I got started three years ago. Well, my daughter for a while, since she was seven and eight, wanted to be a YouTuber. And I, as being like, kind of like this mom that likes to do educational stuff, I said, we could do it if it was going to be educational. She wanted to be a video gamer, do Minecraft or something, but I said, no. And I was also trying to make my daughter learn Spanish. So we were watching, we were watching Pablo with Dreaming Spanish. And she said she likes to draw. She's very artistic. And she said, well, maybe we could do something like Pablo's Dreaming Spanish. And I actually contacted Pablo and, you know, asked him like for some advice. And he gave me some advice of how he films. He will do these videos where he has a drawing board and there's a camera looking down and a camera looking at him and he's drawing while he's talking. And so I had no idea what I was doing. I get started by going to this thing called LTV. It's just like local access channel and you can have a membership and you can borrow equipment from them and they teach you how to edit. And that's how I got started. And so my whole vision of getting started on YouTube was not something easy. It was going to require multiple videos and layering and cutting and inserting stuff. So it wasn't going to be easy, but that's how I kind of got started on YouTube. I don't know if you guys want to both introduce yourself to just in case people don't know you. Uh, okay, I'll go first then. So my name's Ken. Um, I've um, done several videos with Rochelle um, as part of her Dreamy English um, channel. Uh, just chats, some general chats and uh, several chats, uh, sort of film reviews. I call them film reviews, very generic film reviews, which are aimed at learners of English who can listen to a, a conversation between two natives um, talking about the subject of films um, and listening to the difference between an American accent and a British accent, and hopefully use that as part of their, um, their learning process. Um, I, I'm kind of, I'm impressed in, in terms of the way Rochelle has, has brought the, the channel forward and is trying to encourage people to, to learn English. So, um, but yes, Isabel. Okay, my name is Isabel. Uh, I'm from Spain. Um, I'm teaching English to children, but I need to improve uh, my speaking. So I don't know, but suddenly I um, I find this channel and, and, and I was a group and Rachel was there. And at the same time came and it was a surprise for me because I knew Ken before from another WhatsApp group. Um, it is a great opportunity to improve my language because I need it urgently. So they are helping me a lot. And I'm here to support Rochelle and Ken as well because this channel is really, really useful for us. And I really appreciate all your help of both of you, okay? And Rachel for having this channel. Yes, but you were a user of the, the, the channel and of the resources and of YouTube generally. I mean, so anyway. Well, I when I when I wanted to have this live, which is not alive now, I wanted to invite my favorite people. 
to to come and join me. Thanks, my favorite people. So that's why you are here. And um, and so let me tell you a little bit about like so the the reason what what the whole vision of starting the channel or the way that I'm going to teach English because I'm a native speaker, but I don't have like this degree of teaching English. So the way that Pablo was teaching Spanish is something called comprehensible input method. And that's the whole idea of like teaching with drawings and hand gestures and stuff in a very simple way that somebody that had no, no English or no Spanish could watch it and they could understand what he was telling, what the story was. So that was what I was doing. The first video I did, I think I started it over three times and it took me more than like 10 hours to, to edit. And I like doing it. I found that I like doing it because I could be creative and stuff. But here's the thing, like that, that was not very sustainable. And throughout my whole journey of this, I've also been told, asked at my work to teach YouTube to high school students. And so I discovered something called the, it was, it's called the YouTube 10, top 10 fundamentals of YouTube. And one of the fundamentals of YouTube is sustainability. And so I, while I do still enjoy, and I want to make those type of videos that are comprehensible input, I can't make those on a weekly basis because they take too long. And I work full time. Like I don't have the ability, like Pablo, he kind of, he had a, he was going to school, he quit his job and he had, he had no children, no house, right? So he could take the money he saved and he could just spend full time on YouTube and do that. But I can't do that, right? I have a house, I have kids, I have a job. I can't do that. So I needed, you know, I was making these videos, but then I started getting requests to do conversation videos with people. And mm -hmm. that was much more sustainable. I could make a conversation maybe one or two a week, but at least one a week. But I can't make one of those drawing videos where I'm telling a story in a very like beginner or super beginner way. I can't do that on a weekly basis because it's not sustainable. It takes too much time. So I would like to get to doing more of that or finding an easier way to do that. And I actually was just talking to another person from Canada. He has a English comprehensible YouTube channel. And he was actually telling me some other ways that I could do it that might make it easier to make those type of videos. Like I just actually recorded with Murad. Um, Murad just joined us. So I don't know if you want to quickly introduce yourself, Murad. First of all, thank you so much for uh, giving us the opportunity and to invite us to this lovely uh, session. And uh, congratulations for the third anniversary. Wish you all the best in your coming endeavors and to see your uh, YouTube channel getting developed and uh, getting more uh, views. As I mentioned to you before, you know, you have one of the, the most uh, beautiful uh, English classes or English YouTube uh, channels. And uh, all you have to do is to keep going and to come with your brilliant ideas and you deserve all the best. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And so that that was like something I, when I started this, like I said, my daughter wanted to do this and you'll notice that she was in many of the videos at the beginning, but she's not really in the videos now. I totally didn't see myself as making videos. I didn't like to talk in front of people. I didn't like to make a presentation at work. And there I was making videos and then watching myself and editing. And I thought I would hate that, but I didn't mind it. And I was actually making videos where I'm, I'm looking pretty silly. Like I'm like holding up my leg and like an arm and a leg and making these silly videos or videos with like a horse head squirrel feeder. But things that I think are funny and things that I think, in my humble opinion, help people learn English, but I think is funny too. I think I, I enjoy it. I get creative with it. And it became more of something that I was just doing. Some people ask what happened to my daughter. Well, what happened is middle school. What happened was she's almost becoming a teenager. And she's a little bit embarrassed about being on YouTube with her mother. Uh, so she doesn't really want, she doesn't want her friends to know about it in the beginning. She was making some videos with her friends, but she doesn't want her new friends to know about it. She doesn't want her teachers to know about it. And she's not really wanting to be in the video so much with me now. So that being said, I love it. Like I just have gotten addicted to like every morning I would get up and I would wake up and look, do I have more people following me? Um, how many people watched it? Now I get up and I say, oh, I just made 20 cents because I just got monetized yeah. 
like <laughs> two weeks ago. So I'm super thrilled to say I've almost made a whole $5, $5. Mm-hmm. So maybe I could go buy myself a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you found that over the three years, I mean, obviously your skill level will have gone up immensely um, and your understanding as to what your audience potentially needs. I mean, obviously you started off with some very simple videos for beginners, but obviously I know that when we do chats, we're looking at more advanced um, learners of English. And obviously to some extent, because these go on to the community television, um, you're looking at providing content for the community television channel. But if we look at your YouTube channel as a English learning um, source or, or a library of information, um, do, you, do you like the way it's going? Do you like how the content is sort of from the very simple to the much more um, advanced level? I, I definitely do. I see the difference as, I, as I've gone, I've gotten better at the editing, I've gotten better at trying to like, think about what people would like. Like I would notice, I watch YouTube a lot and I would notice that I will watch a video and they'll have this like little bit that's super interesting. And then it jumps into something else. And I notice they're taking the most interesting part of that video and they're sticking at the beginning. So that way I'll want to watch it. And I'll do that when we make our movie reviews, I'll, I'll watch it and I'll think I'll mark different parts of the video and I'll think what is the most interesting thing that we said or that we shared about that movie and I'll I'll mark them and I'll listen to each one and I'll stick that at the beginning and then just finding different ways to use whether it like the green screen I have a green screen on my porch and I'll use it sometimes if I'm doing like I did one about idioms and I will change the background depending on which idiom I'm talking about as another way to kind of help people learn or or kind of help them understand what I'm talking about. So that was like figuring out how to use the green screen, which I don't do anything easy. I use something called Adobe Premiere, which isn't an easy software. So trying to figure out the green screen and figuring out all of the, like, if you don't get your lighting right, it's kind of like a little bit difficult to use it, if that makes sense. Finding different ways. So I think as I'm watching my videos or as I'm like, I'm rewatching them, which you taught me very well, Make sure you rewatch that video more than once to make sure there's no mistakes in it. And, and sometimes just listening to it, like what I'll do is I'll have the video here, but I'm looking here at the, at the audio and I'm listening to it and I'm watching it and I'm, and I'm cutting something. Okay. Does that sound right? If I cut this bit out. So I, I do think that I'm getting better. And that was a thing too. When I first went to post, my first video wasn't great, but I thought if I wait till that video is perfect, I might not post for another three years. So I uh-huh. knew that most YouTubers, you're going to see this progression of their videos getting better and better. So I knew like, I'm going to post this video and it's not the best, but I'm hoping that people will see that. And I'll see that those videos are getting better and better. I, a, a quick question. If you've been introduced to YouTube stroke film production, 15, 20 years ago, would you have changed your job? Would you have changed the direction of where you, your profession? You know, I, I might have. Like, you know, when I was in college, I went, I was talking actually to Murad the other day. I went to college for history and economics, but I did take a couple black and white photography classes, which I thoroughly enjoyed. If I would have had that chance to study sort of film, I think I, I would have changed it because. I feel like it gives you a way, especially YouTube. I feel like it, YouTube gives you a way to have a career in anything. Like I watched one YouTuber, his, his channel is called Vertasium, and he was going to school for physics, but he wanted to be a film creator. He wanted to go to film school, but he didn't get into film school. But he started to make some content before YouTube existed. And then when YouTube existed, he made content for YouTube. And at the beginning, his videos were horrible, but he didn't know that. He just put them on there and he got better and better. But now, now he's big. He's making videos sometimes with Mr. Beast, which if anybody doesn't know, he's like one of the biggest YouTubers. And it gives him a way to teach physics in a fun way that anyone can understand on YouTube and make a career of it, which like, how could in the old days, like before YouTube, how mm. could somebody in that field 
somebody that's interested in physics and is able to, and wants to be a film person can actually have that career. And so for me, this idea of doing an English language channel also is ideal because I can talk about anything. I can do movie reviews. I can do book reviews. I can talk about the environment. Anything, anything is a English lesson because if you need to know how to talk about the environment, you need to know how to talk about movies. You need to know how to talk about your job. So anything could be a topic for it. We are both natives. So um, a question I would sort of throw in to both uh, Isabel and Murad is as English learners of a high level, I mean, how, how do you use this channel? How do you use Dreaming English? How do you use Rochelle's channel in terms of either one, um, Isabel, is, is, do you use it in terms of giving that to your students? And do you use it yourself? How do you use it yourself? And I think the same with Murad as well. I mean, are you, do you use the chats with, with myself, with Laurel, with other people as a, as a sort of half hour of just, let's just listen to this and see how much I understand, whether uh, I, I can kind of pick up all of the differences between myself and Rochelle or between uh, other people. Oh, we just disappeared. So the question now is directed at Isabel. So. Okay. <laughs> for me. Okay. I, I have to tell you that at this moment, I'm using this channel mainly for me, you know, because it is very interesting in the difference between your accent, your English accent and uh, American accent, you know, um, mo mostly because you speak so fast <laughs> in the reviews. So for me, it is uh, uh, quite challenging because uh, it is a way of training my ears. And at this, at this moment, like this, because my students are lower level, you know, but uh, I don't, when I give classes, I don't have enough time to, 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 uh, to watch the videos, but I'm going to introduce all of them because they are so interesting, mainly the short videos that uh, Rachel is doing right now, you know, because it is only five minutes. Right. Or even less. So it is a way of introduce uh, an idiom you know, or some special vocabulary or some funny thing, you know. So I'm going to introduce these short videos. Because yeah. long videos, I don't have enough time in an hour to teach them everything. I, I would see, I would think that too, because those longer ones are going to be more advanced. And exactly. now one of the things that YouTube introduced a year ago, which was very convenient for when I taught my first YouTube camp was YouTube shorts, which I try to make one of those a week. I find something like last week, I ended up being at the botanical gardens and I thought, what can I do with flowers? So I was looking up like little idioms or little phrases. And then I came across flower child, like, all right, I'm going to make, move, I'm going to make a video <laughs> about flower child because you know, it's not something you say all the time, but me, I'm teaching the word flower. I'm teaching, I'm teaching like different vocabulary in it. And then it just was a fun video in a beautiful location. When I was uh -huh. making that though, I was filming it. <laughs> there was a tour going by. So I was waiting for them to go by because I'm still a little shy sometimes. And then it started raining. <laughs> <laughs> I had to like wait for it to stop raining. You are very funny in those videos. I love them. I love them yeah. because you you can you can learn you can learn one special thing thing in one video. So for me, it, it, they are okay. I think that they are more useful than than longer videos. I mean, for advanced for advanced levels, it is okay because for me, uh, when Ken and you or Laurel um, talk about or give a review of a film, it is a way of how you express uh, yourself about some circumstance, circumstances in the film, you know, and from time to time you have uh, advanced vocabulary and it is um, quite challenging mm. listening to both of you. Listening well, to both well of I mean, you. I think um, when, when, when I first discussed this or when this kind of came about, um, I think that was our idea, wasn't it, Michelle, that it would be for advanced learners of English. Yeah. It would be a, a way of, 
of them challenging themselves with two natives. But I mean, the thing I, I like about the channel and I like about short videos is the intensity of just that two, three, four minute video where, as mm -hmm. you say, you can introduce a piece of um, either a piece of grammar or some new words exactly. and you're, you're repeating it two, three, four, five times. And I find those on the Spanish side of things brilliant because um, the repetition is really handy. Okay. Um, the fun and the playfulness is really handy as well. I think if, you, if, if you're having fun watching something, you will invariably pick things up faster. You will, in, you know, if you're enjoying it, you will pick things up faster. So, um, I mean, I, 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 I mean, for me, it is a difficult, and I can see it being a very difficult juggling challenge between the short videos because, as you say, they are actually quite time consuming. They're, time, they're very time consuming. Whereas I think maybe the chats, because they're, because of the way we do them and you do them with Laurel and other people is that you're listening, you're pulling out the repetition and you're just bringing it together. But the short videos, I know personally from my film production skills in terms of the way I work, they are invariably tougher because keeping a two, three, four minute video snappy and interesting is a task in itself uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's, a, it's a real it's a real task and obviously if you're making them for beginners of english or some fairly early low stage low level english learners it's you're having to think in a very simple kind of way to make sure uh -huh. that those viewers are able to understand everything um, Whereas, you know, a general chat, you are very much dealing with people who you know have a, have a good level and are prepared to really concentrate on a chat and listen intensely to that chat. I have a question, Rachel. Have you thought about explaining, about explaining some difficult uh, structures in English for advanced levels? So like the idea of like my channel, yeah. So the, the idea of my channel is like the comprehensive input method really doesn't deal with grammar. Um, and so like, I would probably like, I would probably recommend people to go to Laurel's channel or other channels to look for that because she does stuff like that. And I'm not a grammar teacher. Like my whole thing is like teaching, teaching English in a natural way without boring grammar. While grammar is important, because if you're going to take the IELTS exam or other exams like that, you're going to need to have the grammar. But one, I'm not a grammar teacher. I'm not like an ESL teacher or whatnot. I'm a native speaker. And I'm trying to teach things without that boring grammar. So what I try to do sometimes, because people still want that, is that I'll say, okay, I'll teach some idioms or I'll teach some expressions yeah. or I'll teach some uh -huh. preface. Like I actually uh -huh. I told you how we have baby rabbits right now. So unexpected baby rabbit. So I'm planning to make a little video about teaching prepositions. Like I can teach over and under and between and all that with these cute baby rabbits because who doesn't like cute baby rabbits? And that way I can teach prepositions. It's a little bit of grammar, but it's going to be fun. There'll be rabbits, mm -hmm. they're cute. And it'll teach those important things that you need to know to speak English, right? So I really am not so much focusing on grammar i'm trying to like steer away from that because that's not what comprehensible input comprehensible input is really talking about listening listening lots of easy to understand input and really learning the same way that children or babies learn by because uh -huh. children and babies do not learn grammar they don't learn verbs they don't learn prepositions they don't learn all that kind of stuff they just learn by listening to a whole bunch of input around their environment but of course, we're not, I'm teaching mostly adults, although my content I think is good for all ages, except for the movie review with <laughs> Harry Met Sally. Um, besides that, it's good for all ages, but probably the majority are adult learners that are watching. And so obviously we're not the same, and same as babies, like we've already grown, but maybe we're trying to teach you in a way to make something fun, fun and interesting, but it's still teaching you with teaching you in a way that, especially with those beginner level videos that you wouldn't really need to have any of the language and you would pick up on it. 
And that's uh -huh. the idea is that the more and more you listen to English and listen, hopefully, to correct English, hopefully I'm speaking all in correct grammar, that you would uh -huh. develop an ear and you would just know that if you said something, if you put the verb in the wrong place, you would know that's not right because you listen to so much. It does. Mean, no, I was just going to say, actually, uh, coming back to something Rochelle's just said and something um, I did, because I, I, being a Spanish player, I'm, I'm constantly listening to the radio, I'm constantly listening to or watching TV and things on YouTube. And this idea that when you say something, you kind of go, that doesn't sound right because I'm sure I've heard it in another way from a native and all of a sudden you question yourself and you question why you've said it wrong. So um, I, I totally understand this comprehensible um, input. I mean, I did basic Spanish. I did three months of learning grammar and everything I know after that is talking and listening. And you will, and you, you're quite right. As a child, you're picking that up. I mean, I think in the UK, children generally go to school and start to learn at about five. So prior to that, they're not being taught grammar. They're not being taught, you know, they're, they're literally listening and picking it up. Obviously, as we get older and the older we get, it takes longer. But um, I, I'm certainly in agreement with Rochelle in terms of listening and listening and listening. And then when you say something, you suddenly go, doesn't sound right. I know it doesn't sound right. I may not be, I may not know why it doesn't sound right, but I just know it doesn't sound right. And you can go back and then analyze what you've just said. But uh, yeah, so, sorry, Mariah, you were going to you were going to say something, and I jumped in and interrupted. No, 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 at all. Thank you so much, and always, you know, coming with the useful uh, interactions. So uh, first of all, uh, before I ask you something, uh, dear Rochelle. Uh, I really need to emphasize that the way you are teaching English is the best way of uh, teaching English. This is from my own perspective, because uh, I believe is, is the best way of learning any language is to take it naturally by listening and reading books and grammar. It will come along with the, with your listening. So you don't have to take uh, courses going around grammar and trying to, uh, to waste your time in these perspectives. So uh, I prefer the way that we are learning things, you know, naturally. So this is uh, one thing. And I need also to ask you about, you know, the beginning. What was your motivation to start your YouTube channel? And what was your motivation to continue for three years? And what will be your motivation to continue for the coming week? And what is your plans for the coming week as well? Yeah, so <laughs> motivation was really my daughter wanted to be a YouTuber. And I made made the decision that it needed to be educational. That was the motivation. And I thought it would just be something that I did alongside her, but now it's turned into me. My motivation to continue is one, I've been meeting people from all over the world and making friends that I thoroughly enjoy talking to each day. I, every morning at first, I was like looking to see, you know, how many subscribers, how many people watch my channel. Now I'm looking to see like, Hey, I almost have enough money to buy a cup of coffee. So that's a motivation. <laughs> the money is is about kind of like reinforcing that what I'm doing is working is kind of like just a feel good thing. Like I'm not going to quit my day job on this. It was just another thing to say, I am being recognized for the work that I'm doing. In addition, like actually got me to kind of mix some of this YouTube into my day work by the fact that my boss Valen told me, Valen told me to teach a YouTube camp to high school students. And so I didn't have to do it. That's why I call it Valen told, right? I had that opportunity to really kind of delve into YouTube and learn a lot about the, the, the algorithm and the, the best practices and all the like copyright law and all these different things that I wouldn't have time to do had I not been asked to teach it to high school students. So I've been kind of able to kind of mix this hobby into my full-time job through the years. Like I have improved and gotten better and added new things. Like first it was just these videos where there was the drawing board and telling a story of like the fox and the grapes, adding puppets and all that kind of stuff. But then it turned into making conversation videos, doing some English Spanish lessons with Isabel and, and Ken, turning it into the movie reviews. Like that was like a cool thing because it's almost like having a book club. I love watching movies. So now I can do movie reviews with Ken and with Laurel and, you know, be able to like, 
have an excuse to sit down on a Saturday night and watch a movie and watch it more than once because I'm going to talk about it and, you know, get a chance to watch movies that I wouldn't have chosen and then choose some movies myself and, you know, just add some different things. So I have all these different aspects to the channel. And then what will I want to do in the future? Well, I would like to, I just got monetized and I'd like to do things like maybe there's like something when you're monetized that you can do like a little join thing, like for a dollar 99 or 499 but I don't know what that is yet. I want to kind of like explore what are the things that I could do and what are the things that are sustainable. So if I say every month you get to go live with me, well, I need to know that I have the time to do it. Basically what, what that lot, what that little join feature would be like. And I guess my, you know, the, the future of it would be to just like grow it more, talk to more people. Um, and then who knows, maybe it's going to be something that will be a little bit of supplemental income. So I think it's going to just grow. I'm going to do more things. I'm going to get better at the things that I'm doing, do more collaborations. And I don't know if I told everybody, but in on July 18th, in just a couple of weeks, I'm going to Washington, D.C. and present on the YouTube camp that I did that is going to be for like, so I work for an organization called Gear Up and Gear Up is a federally funded grant that's in 47 or 48 states. So we have this huge, huge conference that we have every year. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to be speaking in front of 2000, like whatever, 2000, 3000 people. But in the conference is little workshops. And so I'm probably going to have a room full of like 100 people and I'm going to be sharing and I'm going to be presenting on the YouTube camp that I did. So I think that's pretty exciting because I would not have been doing that. I would not be going to Washington, D.C. and presenting if I didn't start this YouTube channel. That's so beautiful. Great progress. But you know, and being a YouTuber is not as easy as we can we can imagine, you know. So it is a lot of work behind and lots of hours. So do you think it, do you recommend someone trying being a YouTuber to be a YouTuber? Yeah, and so what I would recommend, I'll tell you, like it is a lot of hours. I think what I would recommend people to get started would be to start, like I, like when I tell my students to start with their phone, like start making videos with your phone. Now you can make YouTube shorts with your phone and start with that. Maybe try to do one a week or one every other week. You want to have something called consistency, which is another one of those fundamentals. So that could mean consistently posting. So I try to post once a week. It could be every other week, but you want to consistently post. Otherwise, people will stop watching your channel to be doing something that is sustainable. So if you decide that you're going to have a very complicated, you're going to post like three or four videos a week, and then that's too much for you, that you're going to find you're not going to be able to continue and you're going to burn out. So I think finding that happy medium of what you're able to do. And for me, it's able, like what I'm able to do is say, I say new videos every week. So it's one or two videos. I don't say how many, because I, it could be four videos one week and it could be two videos the next week to basically be consistent, but to, to plan on doing something that you know that you can do, that you can sustain, because that's the most important thing. Because here's the thing I tell my students to earn money on YouTube is not easy. You need to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. That's a big thing. Now, for me, that took almost three years. I, have, I had um, a YouTuber come and speak to my students. He did that in less than a few months, but other people, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be different for everybody. And even when you earn money, it's not going to be very much. So it's not like something that you're like, oh, I'm going to quit my day job. So I think going to YouTube because you have something you want to share, something that you're passionate about, and that will show through. If you're going to YouTube and then say, okay, the biggest videos that are being made and most popular are video gaming, but I don't like playing video games. My, my videos about playing video games are not going to be good and no one's going to watch them. So you need to be passionate about it. So those are really like sustainability, having a passion and being consistent. I was just going to ask, obviously, it, it sounds also that it's, it's not just about the money, the, the channel. It's also about the education. It's about the assistance of language learning, because obviously you're using YouTube yourself as a language learning tool by either, you know, sort of watching podcasts watching other YouTubers teaching Spanish, et cetera, et cetera. So are you, in some respect, giving back by your own channel? So you've, you've been using other YouTubers as a way of, of, of learning, improving your Spanish, but you're giving back 
probably the same way that I am in terms of chats and groups by giving back to those people, by helping them to improve, to better their English skills. Yeah, and exactly. I mean, it started out with me kind of losing a job like 10 years ago and trying to brush up on my Spanish. And then how I get ideas is I watch other YouTubers that are teaching Spanish because I figure, well, if I'm going to watch YouTube, I'm going to try to learn Spanish. And then I look at, oh, what's Pablo doing or what's uh, Professor Juan doing or the different YouTubers that I watch. And I think, oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll do something like that. And then I'm giving back because I love to read the comments of how much my videos are helping people. That is like what motivates me. Like the money is not like the money is going to buy me one cup of coffee at Starbucks. That's obviously not going to be the motivation. The motivation is helping people and giving back by what I learned. Like you said, what I learned by learning Spanish on YouTube and through podcasts and then kind of like reinventing it, changing it up a bit, but then spitting it out into English. And Murad, you were going to say something. Yes, actually, you know, um, I have my uh, my own, uh, you know, addiction in social media. I'm more active in Facebook. And um, as an um, influencer or you, a YouTuber or whatever, uh, I think our first, you know, uh, demand is how we can satisfy our subscribers. So we have always, you know, to come with, you know, unique ideas in order to attract people to watch your content and definitely you know without having this interaction we will lose our uh, what i call passion to do this thing so one of the important thing is how we can come with an idea that can uh, attract people to watch you. so in this regard what you are doing you know as uh, personally in order to bring people to watch you i mean i think that's like another one of those youtube fundamentals is finding what your target's going to be. So my target is learning English because one, I'm a native speaker. So I figure, well, I have, I have some qualification to teach English because I'm a native speaker and focusing on that. So maybe somebody's going to do video gaming or maybe somebody's going to do something else, but you need to kind of figure out what your audience is going to be. So my audience is everyone around the world that's learning English, which is a really big audience, but I might then focus more on certain areas. Like I might focus on people that are in Latin America and Spain, depending on the content that I'm making. I think it's really figuring out what your niche is. So if you're making one, if you're making videos on travel and then you're making video game videos and you're making all kinds of things, people on YouTube aren't going to understand what your YouTube channel is and they're probably not going to subscribe and they're not going to stick to it. But knowing that not everyone's going to be my audience I knew when I did the YouTube camp and I told the students about my channel, I said, I don't really expect you to subscribe to my channel because you already know English. My audience is mostly people that ate as English as a second language. So I think that's an important thing, but also to have something that you have passion about, passion about because if you're making videos that is about something you're not interested in, you're not gonna, that passion isn't going to show through. So I don't know if that answers your question. I think certainly tar targeting is, is I and mean, that's the thing I think with with YouTube and obviously streaming services that you are you are catering to an audience directly to that audience. So your content is very much made for that particular audience. You're not looking at a, a broadcast TV audience. You 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 are as you say you you're developing content for a very niche audience. And that is the audience of those who are learning English from either the very early stages and up to much more advanced. And I think that's kind of quite a nice thing as well, is that it's quite a broad spectrum of programming you're putting out. And I do understand the need to be consistent with programs, with, with content. Mm -hmm. I'm going to content because obviously quite a lot's quite short. Um, but obviously, I think the the need to fulfill the needs of the spectrum from beginner to advanced is also a very, very difficult thing because if you were just uh, targeting beginners, you could really work that one, but you are, you've kind of set yourself a very broad brush in terms of the audience, the, the, the English learning audience that you're trying to direct content to. Do you find that problematic? I do. And I think that's something that Pablo from Dreaming Spanish found as well, because 
making some of the more advanced or intermediate stuff is easier. It's sometimes just a matter of having a conversation with somebody, but yeah. the stuff that is the beginning, that's the stuff that's very time consuming because you're going to have editing. You're going to like the way that, that he was doing and I was doing is the multiple camera or you, a tablet to draw on and stuff. Uh -huh. So you're adding in pictures and all that. So I think he mentioned having that super beginner and beginner content was more difficult and it's more difficult for me. Like I can produce a lot of this conversation videos. I can easily produce those like one or two a week, but when it comes to the beginner side or super beginner, that's really hard for me because one, it's, it's more, it's going to be like having that multiple camera and also getting in the head of what people are going to understand. Like sometimes I'll film something and then I go to edit it. I'm like, oh, I don't know if they understand that. Maybe I should insert a picture mm -hmm. because maybe they don't know what I'm talking about. So that's another reason why it takes me a lot of time. And, and so basically, yeah, it is hard for me to have that wide variety. I want to work more on that. But again, it's that sustainability that it's not sustainable for me to make so much of that. So in the future, like I think, Murad, you're asking what the future would be like, would be for me to make more of that beginner and super beginner stuff. So that way the channel is more balanced. Uh, have you, um, I mean, have you thought about sort of, because um, the short ones really do work, um, have you thought about sort of 30 second videos? And so, yeah, I so, did. I don't know if you watch them very much, um, Ken, but once a week I make videos that are under a minute and that's that okay. YouTube short. So yeah. I try to make them under 30 seconds. Sometimes depending on like if I'm doing an idiom or something, it might be closer to like 50 minutes, but I've made them anywhere from eight seconds to under a minute. Cause that would be that YouTube short, which apparently you must not have watched too many of them. Well, I mean, obviously but you yes. don't, you don't need I'm to. Not exactly. I'm not exactly your target. I know audience. you're not my target <laughs> audience. So I, but in any case, um, where, like where is, where is the here. chats? Yeah. They're, the, the chats, the chats for me are actually, they're quite useful. Cause again, you know, you're dealing with people from around the world and these chats can be quite interesting in terms of how they're approaching English or, um, how kind of just talking about culture and other bits and pieces, they're actually quite useful just as, as a sort of chat to listen to. Whereas obviously the shorts, because I'm a native English speaker, but I mean, yes, I think it, because one of the things that television studios quite often do when they're, when they're recording game shows and chat shows is they'll actually record five, six, seven or eight in a day. And then obviously transmit them at a later date. I'm just wondering whether, um, you have brainstorming sessions where you just sit down and go duh, 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 and think, actually, do you know what? I could do six 30 second videos. Therefore, I've got six weeks worth of content. I, you, yeah. you, yes, that is a smart thing to do. Like that, like you said, block recording or whatnot. And it's something that I mean to do. And sometimes I, I do that. I don't do it enough. It's like sometimes it's just a matter of like, oh, I really need to make a short. Let me think of a an idea and I'll like search the internet or I'm like, oh, I'm going to the botanical gardens. Let me think of an idea. But yes, having those ideas and coming up with five, like right now I'm going to be going on vacation for like three weeks this summer. So I'm going to want to have some content made. So I'm not making the content and I'm not editing it. So it's going to be made ahead of time and we'll just drop to the channel. So yes, that's a great idea. And it's something that I'm planning to do, but sometimes just life gets in the way because I'm still working the full-time job and I still have the kids and I still have all the stuff going on. See, I think you're missing your trick. So you're going on holiday. There's a dozen videos. And I did are that you, last year. Are you year. driving? Are you going on the train? Are you going on the plane? Yeah, I did that. And I will for sure. Last year, I went live a couple of times. I'm not going to do that this time because the the um, internet wasn't very good. But I'm going to make videos there for sure. But I'm going to have the videos that are all ready to go that don't need to be edited. But I'll probably make some YouTube shorts. You'll probably see some YouTube shorts from the beach but I don't do anything easy. Like sometimes I make those YouTube shorts on my phone, but then I bring them back to my computer and I get them all fancy and add extra things. So I'll probably have things ready to go and I'll be making content while I'm on vacation for sure. Because obviously um, I haven't got a YouTube channel, but one of the things I've been doing over, over the couple of years, I've been sort of on the WhatsApp groups and various chats is I'll quite often just film something like cooking um, or I'm doing a task and just talk as I'm doing things, or if I'm visiting somewhere, I'll talk and just 
explain not so much British culture, but just explain to people what Britain's like in terms of housing, churches, et cetera, et cetera. And people kind of find those interesting, one, because of the English content, and two, because of the cultural differences. So I, I think you need to be, you need to see every every opportunity as as something you can use to create content and keep your short, short um, time content. Right, and that's why, you're that's right. The, that's why like having this in my pocket, I'm always oh, like, oh, oh. you know, there's always an ability to make a short, like one time and I'm, I'm yes. gonna like end this pretty soon because I know I wanna be thoughtful of people's time, but I was taking a walk and I had my cell phone with me. And so there was, there was actually people put out their trash and they must've got a new kitchen sink. So they put out their old kitchen sink. And I thought, I'm going to teach the, I'm going to teach the whole expression, everything but the kitchen sink. Be like, oh, look, these people put their trash out. They put everything but the kitchen sink. And oh, wait a minute, they have the kitchen sink. Every time my son goes on vacation, he packs everything but the kitchen sink. Quite often, the ideas for mine are like spur of the moment. I have this idea. I'm going to make this video. But like you said, yeah. always ha- be ready to be making content. But I yeah. want to thank everybody and be thoughtful of time. Thank you, everyone. All right. And we wish you the best in the, pre- in the next years. Yes. yes. Thank, you. thank you so much. Keep going. Yeah. You're doing everything. Yeah. I would work. So. Be, spontaneous. be spontaneous. Keep the short. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. See, it's spontaneous. All right. Well, well, thank you. And I will see you all in our group. Thank you, Rochelle, for everything. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.